Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Diana Corcoran. Hey. How are you? Oh my goodness, you're from Australia. I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Thank you so much, Missy. You, well, you can already tell by the accent I, that I'm I incredibly love, southern. I love your accent. I have to say, I love talking to people who are from Australia, who are British. It's just, I just love, I love your accent so much. It's great. Oh. Um, so, and I know that you lived in Australia for for quite some time, right? I mean, you 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 grew up there. I did, born and bred. So I only moved to the States um, five years ago, so 2011, and uh, it'll be five years this year. Wow. And how has that been for you? You know what? It's just been amazing. I'm not going to lie. Of course, I miss home. I miss my family. But it's just been, it's a logical place to to move to when you're a country music singer. (laughs) Where else are you going to go? I did so much uh, so much in Australia that it was just the next step was always going to be Nashville, and uh, I probably would have done it sooner. I think if I wasn't terrified of leaving my family behind. Right, right. Oh, I, I, I bet. And you have you have an amazing voice. You, we, we've been listening Thank to you. you. Center Stage has been listening to you, and your voice is absolutely amazing. That it's no wonder you've won so many awards. And I mean, you have you have over four hundred awards. That is crazy. Oh, I mean, you know what? You know what's funny about that number is that it is a true number, mm-hmm. but it literally comes from a biography that was written by my mum when I was twelve, or I can't remember, like sixteen maybe. And so, what it it includes every single talent quest that I ever won since I was a child. Well, I don't care. That's great. <laughs> I, I think I've won Thank like you. three, and one of them was for selling the most candy bars while I was in band <laughs> in, oh, in high school. Oh my gosh! Oh, I love that. <laughs> well, actually, that that is something to be proud of because mine would have been how many I ate. I wouldn't well, have been able to sell that many. I kind of cheated. I mean, I knew if I left a box of candy bars out, my dad would eat it every single time he came home from work. So. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it was, it was kind of funny, but no, I, you know, when you're when you're a kid in school and you win something like that and you get a gift card to your local mall, like it's amazing. But oh, yeah, that was the, the only trophy I've ever I've ever earned was for selling the most candy bars. It was great. Well, you should be proud of that. I think that's amazing. <laughs> It's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> but um, no, but but so but included in those awards, I mean, you won two Australian Country Music Golden Guitar Awards. That, that's huge. That's I did. Yeah, okay, it was just you know that is the goal. If you're a country singer in Australia, then you want to win. You want to win the big ones. And right. uh, to be honest, I never really had goal. Of course, I wanted them, but it just I always thought it was out of reach. Mm-hmm. But I never tried. I just used to make music. I just make music, kick to myself and mind my own business, and they kind of crept up on me. It just it just happened out of nowhere, to be honest. Um, I feel incredibly lucky that I've that I've been able to to have that in my career. Right, right. Well, I I think it's absolutely wonderful. I think it's great, but it's definitely. I mean, you definitely deserve them. You you're you're such a great songwriter as well, and your Thanks. your your new album in America. It's twelve original tracks, and I mean, if I'm not mistaken, you've actually written on every track. Absolutely. My my one big rule. I have no rules because I don't believe that. Uh, that music should have rules, but right. if there's anything that I live by, that is just being authentic. So I don't, even even if I was to record a song that was written by somebody else and wasn't my story, it would have to be something I related to. So the entire album is 100% real and they're all true stories. Right, right. That's that's great. And there there is one story that, and I know it's emotional, and I'm so sorry if you don't want me to bring this up, and you can tell me now to stop, and I will. That's okay. okay. No, that's fine. Your, your, your song, Stranger Coming Home, um, prior to actually oh. reading the story behind this, I, when I'm, I was watching you perform with Eric Pasley, and I'm like, okay, I know that there's something behind this song. I know there is. And once yeah. I read the story, I was just choked up, and... And if you don't want to tell the story with everybody, that that's that's okay. But I mean, this is this is tribute to Carl Brody, right? It is Carl. For those people who don't know Carl, um, he, he is a, he's actually originally Scottish, but he moved to Australia, I think, 25 years ago when he was uh, like quite young. Mm-hmm. And um, and he was uh, he uh, he was just an incredible folk singer and songwriter and and a lot to do with the country music industry and just a really, really, really good guy and one of my best mates. 
Mm. And um, and it was only it was very recently he was diagnosed with he just had pains in the belly and he had he was diagnosed with cancer and we lost mm. him five weeks later. Wow. Um, it was just it's been a, it's a huge shock. I'm still struggling to sort of. In fact, the majority of the time I get through my day by by being in complete denial because it was just so so quick. And uh, Stranger Coming Home is a song that Eric and I wrote with Carl when he was on his trip to Nashville, and we all sat there. And I will never forget. I've written many songs with Carl, but I remember this song because. He sat there with a big grin on his face and I actually turned around and made a joke and I said, why have you got that big grin on your face? He said, have you been smoking pot or something? <laughs> <laughs> and he just laughed at me. He said, no. He said, I'm just so happy. He said, we just wrote one of my favorite songs that I've ever written and I love sitting here and listening to you and Eric sing it. And I, mm. and I made a promise to him before he was sick when we were friends, you know, I said, I'm going to get that song out there. I will make sure it hits one of my uh, my albums. And unfortunately, I, I didn't until... And Eric was coming around for us to do that video when I first found out that he was sick. Uh-huh. And so we didn't know we were going to lose him so so quickly. And mm-hmm. so and it was that night he passed away when Eric was on his way over to, to record that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so he never got to see it, but we got it to the world and I shared right. it on Facebook and yeah. And I, I shared it to my page earlier today because I just Thank you. I absolutely fell in love with the song and you know, the story behind it. I mean, we've all we've all lost somebody to cancer. Um, or we know somebody know. who's battling or, you know, um, and in the American Cancer Society, the Relay for Life event, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them or not, but um, I used to actually set up, um, I used to sell jewelry and I used to set up a, a booth at as many of those events as I could find locally. And wow. I used to donate 100% of all the everything. Um, and, you know, That's amazing I, would, I would get my kids involved and we would just, I mean, for 24 hours, if somebody came, you know, because you have to walk for 24 hours, there's always somebody from some team walking around, you know, this track. And, you know, if it was three o'clock in the morning and somebody wanted to buy a piece of jewelry, it was like I would get up and sell it to them. And, you know, we'd oh. collect the money in an envelope and we'd, we'd turn it in. But, you know, I, I've lost You are so people. wonderful for doing that. I know it's it's just hitting everyone. I actually I lost my dad three years ago um, to cancer as well, which I just never thought was going to happen. I just don't. Right. It's just everywhere. It's right. it's horrendous, and I think that the wonderful thing about music is that we can, you know, we can um, when we have a cause like that, we can get up and band together and, right. and help. So Absolutely. I'm glad that you did that. Oh, thank you. You know, and I just. Uh... I mean, to, you know, I wish I could do more, and I, I think we all wish we could do more, right? So yeah, bringing bringing Absolutely. attention to it, you know, for me, you know, sharing that video um, was what I could do today, you know. But but yeah, I, I think as long as we all continue to to use our gifts or our abilities to try to bring awareness to you know different causes and and you know things that you know. I mean, it's our duty to try to make the world a better place, right? And to try to help I, as many people I as we com- can. I completely agree. And I know that Carla was looking down and and seeing people like you, um, you know, sharing that. And I can't, if you knew Carl, you would understand how much that means to me. I don't think I know anyone who would have been more appreciative and, and just been shocked that you'd even share his music. Like, he was always shocked if somebody did something oh. nice to him. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, he's just one of those guys. It's it's always one of those guys. Right. So I don't understand right. it. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, he's definitely, you know, pain free and, and sitting better than a lot of yeah. a lot of us, right? And you know, um, he was chosen to go home early, which you know is sad for us, but really, what an honor for him and how great it is for him that I know. You know, um, but I know it's the human part of us. It's so hard to to just fathom and understand and you know so many people are struggling in, in life every single day and he doesn't need to struggle anymore and you know that is so true yeah. i know and i have to remind myself but um anyway he'd want us to laugh that's yes, for sure definitely definitely well and you know i think he he would be if he was on this phone call right now too i think he would want to also praise you and your talents i mean you have you have accomplished so much in, in the music world and you You've gotten to rip right with like so many amazing people, Christian Bush and Brian White and Eric Pasley and Jeff Cohen, and I mean, 
to so many people. Yeah. And I want to know, like, because I, I have to know, um, it's Stagecoach this last weekend. I, I was covering Stagecoach, and Christian Bush was in there, and he was in the media tent. And oh. I didn't do an interview with him. Um, there wasn't time in the schedule, but – we there were so many like little flies like flying around and I was swatting yeah. them. He thought I was like trying to get his attention. He was laughing at me. He was like, "Oh my god, no! I'm just swatting flies, Christian." <laughs> like it was. <laughs> but then when you watch his performance on stage, that man is hysterical. He is so funny. He is. So he's a ball of energy. He's just like that. He's always. So I actually call him KB Christian Bush. You know, just and his initials and smile. And I say smiley because he was whenever I. Like, whenever we were working together, he always just had this big grin on his face, but I can't started calling him KB Smiley. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But that, he is full of energy and very happy. Well, that's what I was going to say. So was, was there ever any shenanigans during your, like, rights with him? Because you've written, you've worked with him quite a bit on this album. I haven't. We've actually got a lot of other songs as well. We've also got a song that's coming out that's a theme song, of the opening theme song to a movie called Basmati Blues, which is, uh, which is going to be released, I think, this year. Okay. And it's, it's got a star-studded lineup of, of people in it. And, and Christian and I wrote that song. We've written some great songs. And, it, look, it was never, ever a boring writing session because I have a bit of a twisted sense of humor, and it turns out he does too. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was all – and you know what? We often wrote two songs in a writing session too. Oh, wow. So, yeah, we were pretty quick writers, and um, it just came naturally. So I'd love to take credit for it, but sometimes I feel like that's – from above when a, a song just comes out so right. yeah right oh that's awesome I know I, I was so interested I was like I gotta know what those rights were like because watching him on stage <laughs> and seeing him in the media tent and you don't know how bad like I wanted to just jump up and say okay you know what now you need to take a picture with me I didn't because I knew he was in a rush but Aww. I'm like he still would have he's really he, you know, that. but I, I know that but I respect people way too much I'm not going to be that girl I know. I'm not, you know I do the same thing and I know I mean, I, yeah, I have a story with Kip Moore on an airplane, too, by the way, that <laughs> I kicked myself the whole time. like a song. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Well, go ahead and write it. I give you permission. Um, no, that, know, right? that story, that story is pretty funny, but it's just, you know, when people are on their personal time, they need to be on their personal time. When they're done with their scheduled interviews, you know, they're yep. done. And so, yeah. you know, it is what it is. And, you know, yes, I have that inner fan. We all have that inner fan for certain people. He's just so funny that he seems like such a kick in the butt to hang out with and drink beer with or something. Like, he's just funny. He's he's funny. Oh, absolutely. But then there's Brian White, who that one's pretty funny, too, actually. Um Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess we interviewed him. We we had a conversation. We were in our Halloween costumes this last Halloween. It was pretty funny. Um we we were what? Yeah. What are you dressed as? It's 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 on video, so you'll be able to find it. But oh, okay, I'm going. To, I'm going to go look. Okay, I was yeah. I was totally. I was dressed as Wonder Woman, and he was a Navy SEAL. I think I think he was a Navy SEAL. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but so so your the the album that you have out it's called In America. It is. Has this been your most favorite project so far? Because it's it's just so good. And your song, God oh. is good. I was just like, God, oh, that's a great song. It's so fun. And the guitar you Thank have you. in there, I want to know about the guitar because it's got all kinds of writing on it. Oh, I know. That's called Drunken Scribble. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, look, it, I don't know whether it's my favorite project. I have real struggle saying anything's my favorite mm -hmm. just simply because everything played a part in my life or in my career and it was meant to be there and there was right. always something incredibly fulfilling that I get from it so it's really really hard for me to say that it's my favorite right um I, I am very proud of it it's um it's the first album that I've produced and um I Look, I just, I'm always proud of things that are real, and uh, but I also look back on things constantly, and I don't think there's any artist that can tell you that this doesn't happen, but I look back and go, oh, I want to do it again now and do it different. Right. So not because it, there's anything wrong with it, but just because you constantly are creating, you know, different ideas, and, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, but, you know, in America, it was born, it was actually born by accident. I kept recording the songs as they were written. So, and then we, we put it together and said, okay, this, and you know, the label in, in New York kind of said, okay, this is the, the bunch of songs that are, that we think are great. And, right. um, and a lot of them were on hold for 
for some of the major artists around Nashville as well. So I kind of let that help me gauge what should be on my album. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, if he's on hold for, you know, for Carrie Underwood and right. and all these guys, then only in development, maybe they're good enough for me to record. So because right. I. I'm the first one to admit that um, I know what I love, but I tend to I tend to be completely off the mark when it comes to, you know, what is going to go to number one. Right. <laughs> well, that's, so I just go, yes, in the air, you decide. <laughs> you, you know what? It's it's funny that you said that though, because that's true for so many artists, and I. I remember listening to John Bon Jovi talk, you know, give, I think it was an interview um, where he was talking about, you know, there are songs that he thought were going to do really well off a certain album that ended up yep. not doing really well, but one that he didn't think was going to do great, did really great at. And so, yeah. you know, it, it goes, I mean, I think everybody kind of falls victim to that. We all, we all have that one thing that we really like and we think it's going to just do absolutely phenomenal and we realize oh well that didn't get the reception I, I thought it was <laughs> you know exactly yeah. oh, I'm wrong. <laughs> same thing with my articles right there's one article that I'm just like oh this is my favorite it's so great and I'm like well the article views on this one kind of sucks <laughs> you know yeah, yeah it is weird it, it is, is stuff like that and it's same with my songwriting like with my publisher I send things through that I think it hits and I'm like oh my gosh look at me I'm a genius <laughs> and you don't hear anything back and then I'll write something like really quick in five minutes yeah. and I just go, oh, okay, I better send this to them just to let them know that I've at least been working. Right. And I'll come back and say, this is a hit. When did you write this? You know? I just I can't get right. I give up. I completely right? give up. It's, you're, it's just like, what, whatever. I, you know what? I'm just going to show up and I'm just going to write yeah. and I'm just going to... Yep. I'm just going to keep my thoughts to myself on that one and let it go where it goes. So, yeah. I, I agree. I hear, I hear you on that because I can't predict. I, I can never predict, ever. You know, my, my, my little adventure article about a Bon Jovi fan club trip, I didn't think it was really going to do that well. And it did, it did way better than I expected. But then, you know, some of my other ones, I'm like, now why didn't that one get more? That one was amazing. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I know. <laughs> well, it just shows how much we know. And that's a good thing. You know, that's, that's, that's right. the beautiful thing about life. We don't know. So, exactly. you know what? Just go out there, take the risk, and see what happens. Exactly. So, you know, I, I, I definitely think I definitely think that, it, you know, your your choices for this album, though, were really great. Um, I, I love it. I, I, I think it's awesome. But something else that you've done really, really, really just inspired me to, to learn more about this. You've deployed three times to play for troops. I want to know what, I have. what was that like and what made you decide to do that? It was the single most amazing thing that I've done in my career still to this day. It's, um, you know, we get to go over there and, and as civilians and see things mm -hmm. that civilians will never see. Um, and, uh, and it's also the most appreciative crowd you'll ever play for. So we played for, um, you know, American, Australian, British, German, Dutch, uh, New Zealand soldiers, you know, people from all over the world who are fighting, you know, on, on one side um, or on the same side. And, uh, and it's just, it's amazing. And they all come together and uh, regardless of whether they can speak English and understand what I'm saying or not, they're just so appreciative. And, right. Um, I, I just feel so lucky. I come home and I remember I got off the plane from my first trip and I called mum just to let her know that I was, that it, you know, that I survived. <laughs> and, right. And um, I'm walking through the airport and she said, how was it? And I said, it was the single most amazing thing I've ever done in my career. And if I get asked, the answer is just always yes. I will move Absolutely. heaven and earth to make those trips. That's, that's great. Now, where, where have you been able to um, travel to with, with this? Where have you been deployed to? Those particular things. So I've been um, Solomon Islands, Afghanistan, Iraq, uh, Dubai, Egypt, mm. uh, and Cyprus. Wow. Okay. So I know, I know that Egypt is not something that, that people are, you know, having easy travel to now, but was, no. that, but was that one of your, cause I've always heard that it's just so beautiful. Was that one of your, you know, top places to, to see? Look, it actually was. I still mm. to this day, I just get fascinated with things that are just very different to our cultures. Like for example, the drivers in Cairo, 
the way that they tell you to get out of the way is to actually nudge your car out of the way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm not kidding. There is absolutely no rules whatsoever. There are no lanes. People just drive all over the place. And if you do not get out of the way, they will run you over. And that's oh literal. That is, that is not a threat. They will run you over. You just do not get on the road. Simple as that. So there's things like that. And I think a lot of people just don't really know what's going on, you know, in those places, especially Cyprus. I don't think – there's no American troops in Cyprus, but there are Australian troops, um, mostly federal police, who are actually peacekeeping. Because you know Turkey and um, mm-hmm. Turkey and and Greece are still fighting over Cyprus, so they're technically in ceasefire, and <laughs> oh, wow. so we have you know we have military personnel just sitting there, just waiting for waiting in case someone decides it's not ceasefire anymore, and that's been going on for what thirty years. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> yeah, so it's crazy. This is going on around the world that we just don't realise, right. and. and uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's pretty cool, I must say, to be able to sort of um, have that insight and have the experience. Absolutely. I mean, that that's that's what I was kind of getting at. It's like, you know, you, by by being able to go over there and to see that, you've been able to do something that, you know, most of us will never be able to do. And so to hear it from your experience is really, it's fascinating to me. And, and I'm a little jealous that you've gotten to see some of those things. And, you know, I mean, I obviously don't know how to sing, so I am not jealous <laughs> of being up on that stage because I'd have just gotten booed off. We'll have to get you a job. We'll have to get you a job that will, will get you over there so you can experience all of this. Right? <laughs> and I said that to my brothers. My brothers really wanted to go as well. And I said, well, let me teach you how to be a sound engineer and then we'll right? take you on the next one. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. Oh, my gosh, that's funny. Um, I could be the merch girl. That's what I'm good at. I'm, you I'm, can. I'm, you I'm, can be my backup. You can be my dancer. <laughs> my daughter is going to argue with that one for sure. <laughs> Oh, well, my trust me, anything will, anything will be better than my dancing, that's for sure. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll have to have, like, a horrible dance-off. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm sure the troops will find that entertaining <laughs> if, we're, if we're really bad. So don't worry about that. Oh, my gosh, that's hysterical. I think that would be, I think that would be so much fun, though. I, I, and I, I, I want to thank you for that. I'm, you know, I don't have family serving in the military currently, but I did. And, you know, for all of the yeah. people who serve and all of the people who are married or family members of those who serve, you know, thank yeah. you on behalf of everybody because, you know, it, it's not just the person who's over there fighting for the country. It is the entire family and even their friends that are affected. It is very true. Yeah, yeah that, is, that is very true. And I, I must say, and I'm not going to say this in all cases because I don't want to get, I don't want anyone sort of up in arms about this, but I mean, uh, for, I witnessed a lot of the time it was the partners at home that were probably coping the worst. Right. Um, you know, because they don't know. They've only got three kids that they're trying to get to school by themselves. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and they're crying themselves. They're, they're crying to themselves in the shower yeah. like every morning. And, and um, you know, and it's just, uh, to, to be honest, they, they probably they probably cop it the hardest um, sometimes. Right. And, and um, yeah, so we do need to support Absolutely. everybody involved. Absolutely. I, ha- I have a friend who has twin daughters, Karina. Um, her daughter's just turned one year old, and you know oh. their father is deployed, and I, I believe he's in Afghanistan oh, no. right now, and um, you know, and he's going to be there until I believe October, and you know, it's just it's been tough on her, and you know, having these newborns, and then he had to leave, like that's that's rough, and you know, that's very rough, <clears throat> and it's a stress as well. It's like you you know you hear a knock at the door and you have a panic attack, right. So, you know, it's just that anxiety that's constantly sort of surrounding them being there and not having any idea what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, so again, thank you on, on behalf of all of all of those who are affected, you know, by someone who is, you know, um, has a life in the military. It's just, it's not easy, but I'm, I'm sure they all appreciate the fact that you've, you know, you've been deployed three times now to help bring some smiles and comfort to them. That's that's amazing. Oh, and, and well, thank you for those kind words. It was definitely my privilege, though. Well, I I think it's great. I absolutely think it's great, and I'm so glad you also got to have those experiences for yourself. You know, that's that's got to be exciting. So, what do you what do you have coming up for the rest of 2016? Well, I'm all over the place. So we've got a brand new single out. It's called Thank You for Cheating on Me. Um, nice. I think it's track two on the album. Very, yeah, it's it's like one of my favorites. I'm very proud of that song. Of course, it's a true story. So if 
anyone's been cheated on, you know, you'll love mm-hmm. this song. And if you haven't, you'll still think it's this song. But um, it's just gone to radio, and I think it's just started to hit the charts um, this week. So I'm yeah. just busy uh, promoting that. So I'm all over the place in 2016. I, I hardly know where I am, to be honest. <laughs> I have to keep, you know. And when I've, I've started that short-term memory loss issue right. where I just where somebody will say, oh, what happened last year? And I can remember that, but I can't remember what happened the weekend that just went. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I understand completely. I definitely understand completely. I can pull out dates from 95. I can remember my junior high school yep. class schedule. I was just telling somebody about it the other day. But I can't remember things that happened last week. It's just it's isn't that crazy? Mind blowing. I know. I know. Okay. I hear people having that. I always think, oh my gosh, I got early onset Alzheimer's or something. But I think that really, I tell people about it, and they go, oh, I have the same problem. So oh, yeah. surely not all of us have Alzheimer's. So yeah. Just, no. No. It's, it's, it's totally normal. It's just whatever. We'll we'll get through it. We all will get through it. Now, are you going to be playing at CMA Fest this year? I don't know yet. I might be doing a couple of guest spots, but um, okay. I'm not 100% sure yet. Yeah, we're, we're working on that one. All right. Well, if, so if stand by. Do. Stay tuned. Yes, <laughs> definitely, because if you do, I will be there. Um, Center Stage Magazine will be there, and we're just, you know, going to be kind of covering as many acts as we can. Um, so that will be awesome. If, you, if you're playing, we definitely want to catch you while you're there, so you have to keep us informed. Um and Absolutely. Then, yeah, yeah, definitely. And you have social media. You have a you have an awesome following on Facebook and everything. By the way, I was. Really... I do. My <laughs> friends on Facebook. My social media friends are fantastic. Mm-hmm. They are they're so awesome. Um, I do. Yeah. If, for your listeners out there, please hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm not a huge Twitter fan. I can't keep up with Twitter. I don't know what's going on there. It's just streaming too fast for me. But, you know. Um, but I. I will get back to you. I'm pretty good at responding eventually. Have, have, have you? Okay. See, this is this is my dilemma too, right? I, I, I have Facebook, and it's easy to use, and it's great, and I love it, and I've been using it for so long. And I try to tweet, exactly. And it's a little more difficult. And then there's the Instagram, and then now there's Snapchat, and there's all these, there's uh, all these things. I know. And so I, I know. I, I think that there really needs to be some sort of tool where you can just post to one, and it links to all of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, but it doesn't. It doesn't link to absolutely all. No, I so know. It's like, yeah. It so it's like to. I'll only do like Facebook and Twitter yes. from Instagram, but that's about it. Right. Yeah. Right. But see, Very so I post a, I, I, I post to Facebook, and it'll link to my Twitter from my page, but then not my Instagram, and I'm like, okay, you know what? I give up. I know. <laughs> I know, and then the, and the problem with Instagram is that if you post from there, it'll only go, it'll go to Twitter and Facebook, which is great, but you can't put links in, in no. Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, it's just exactly. Like, I'm like, we we, we, we can't to, win. We need to figure this all out because there's just way too many I know. outlets, <laughs> and, I know. and we just it's don't have crazy. that kind of time. So I don't blame people for just jumping off sometimes and going, you know what? I'm leaving the social media world. Oh yeah. People. If you if you if you're my close friend, you'll know where to find me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, and you connect with with so many of your fans on your Facebook page. I was watching and, you know, seeing your your comments. And, I mean, you're all over your page all the time, and I just think that's great. I think it's it's more real. And people – Well, you know what? You know what? If if people are going to the trouble of um, supporting me and Mm -hmm. being on there and and even typing two words, like, they absolutely deserve that. Sometimes I'm a bit slow because, obviously, if there's too many, it's just next to impossible. But but I do eventually sort of get through there and and try to respond to people. But it's really important, I I think, that you should what you can. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, Taylor Swift is one that a lot of people always are complimenting because she would go home and she would email all of her fans, all of her, you know, she would email yeah. everybody back. And I mm-hmm. just think that's something to really look up to. And it's very admirable when, when I see these artists like yourself who are reaching back out to the, your fans because, you know, you get it. You know why you're here. You know that you know they're 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 the reason why your stuff is continuing to 100%. go. You know, yep, 100%. so I think that's amazing, and and I just wanted to you know make sure I recognize you for that because it really Thank is you. so important, and what that does for the fan is is incredibly huge. I mean, I think about the times where, you know, somebody that I'm a huge fan of will like one of my tweets or one of my posts, and I'm like, no way. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? So, like, John I Cryer. Think they, I think, 
Yeah, and I mean, it's important for them to know as well that it's actually not water off the duck's back with me at all. It's right. just not. Every single time I get a comment, message, email, or even, mm-hmm. you know, a like or whatever, it, 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 it means something to me. And that's, right. and I mean that sincerely. So that's why I try to get back to them because I don't want them to ever think that I don't feel something from that, you know? Right, right. So, yeah. Well, that's great. My goodness. Well, I'm so glad we got to chat today. Thank you so much for taking the time. And, you know, um, and, and I'm, I'm so glad that this time actually worked out for you and, and, and for, for me and we were able to connect because I was so, like, hoping that we weren't, we, you know, we were going to be able to, you know, connect and get this interview done because I was so excited to talk to you. And, you know, I know that your schedule is pretty busy. A lot of people have had, you know, crazy busy schedules this you know upcoming <laughs> upcoming know. summer right I mean everybody's busy and they're putting together summer tours and stuff so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and um man I just I can't wait for more and thank you for sharing that story with me um and you know may, may Carl rest in peace and look down on you and just keep smiling because I know that he's got to be so super proud of you and um you know thank thank Eric Pazley for all of us as well I mean for for coming together Absolutely. and re- recording that with you I think that's just such a beautiful, beautiful moment, and and I'm very, very, very glad I got to hear the story and, and kind of, you know, be a small, small part of sharing it on, on, you know, social media, and I just, I wish you nothing but the best and all of your success and everything, so. Well, thank you so much, Missy. I really, really appreciate you as well, and, and thank you for taking your time. Um, and uh, I can't wait to, to sit down with you and have a coffee in real life. That'd oh, coffee. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. Absolutely. We are going to make a coffee day the next time I'm in Nashville. <laughs> Please. Absolutely. Just I, reach out anytime. Absolutely. All right. Well, you take care, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks, Missy. Thank you. Bye. Bye.